Hello, and welcome to 2020 Cafacumba Development Pastor School Fund uh, meeting. For those of you who are watching from home, we're doing a special video for you uh, so that you can kind of uh, have the next best thing to be in there. So we want to uh, start that out today with a word of prayer, if you would, please. Lord, thank you for the day that you've blessed us with. We thank you for the opportunity to focus on the ministry of the pastors there in Zambia and Congo and other countries around. Lord, we thank you for everyone who's been a part of this fund and continues to be. Pray that you would just uh, speak to each of us the words that you need us to hear tonight and grant me the words that you would have me say. In Christ's name, amen. So, uh, again, welcome. Most of you uh, have been to one of these before or know something about Pastor's School. A lot of you knew uh, Ken and Lorraine Enright, who started Pastor's School a long time ago, and then passed that on to John and Kendra Enright, who continued it on for some time. Uh, some of you don't know that my parents were also missionaries. They were in uh, Kenya, and uh, I grew up, was born and raised there in Kenya, and so... Uh, I uh, feel very much at home in sub-Saharan Africa, where we're living now in Zambia. Um, we do have a couple of Enrights that will be at the, at the dinner. Uh, Elinda, my wife, is the youngest of the Enright children, and Eileen, her sister, uh, will also be there, and she's the one that uh, kind of heads up the finances on this side of the ocean for us. So as I was kind of reflecting on uh, how to start this out, uh, I began to think about kind of the good old days when our parents were missionaries thinking about going overseas. And there were a couple of things that would always kind of make them a little cautious about going overseas at a particular time. One of those was, of course, if there was any kind of disease outbreak. Uh, you know, I wanted to be cautious about that because you never knew uh, how that could affect you. And the other one was you want to be cautious about going into an African country, especially. Uh, right around the time of an election because you just never knew kind of what would happen as a result of that. So I was kind of reflecting on that as I was coming back and thinking, wow, how the tables have turned. Uh, <laughs> here I am coming back to the U.S. worried about both of those things. Um, so it's a little bit different, but um, I'm glad to be here and glad to be able to share this with you and to show you a little bit more and tell you a little bit more about Cafacumba Past Pastor School. I want to first just greet you on behalf of everybody who's out in Zambia. Uh, my family is there. Uh, I know many of you know Kendra Enright, and she and uh, Ken Vance are there, part of the team as well. And um, they are both, uh, you know, kind of in that post-losing your spouse, adjusting to life, uh, but also uh, pretty much retired mode. And so, um, you know, they're doing well, and they send their greetings. And uh, so just wanted to pass that on before we really get started here. I want to give you just a brief update on the pandemic in Zambia. A lot of people are asking the question, how are you guys doing out there? And actually, uh, I think we're doing better there than, than here in the U.S. Uh, there just haven't been the number of cases. Now, we have about 17 million people in Zambia. Uh, our total number of cases so far is just about 17,000. And we've only had about 350 deaths so far from that. So we, we are doing quite well, um, but do appreciate your continued prayers and we will continue praying for you as uh, in regards to that. But we're here to talk about pastor school. And so wanted to kind of open with a, a picture of a bunch of our pastors who graduated from pastor school last year getting ordained and uh, always love celebrating the, the end of the journey. Uh, but we want to talk about kind of the journey itself as well. I want to give some of you maybe new to this whole idea, what's pastor school, etc. I want to give you some facts about that. Uh, it was started in the Democratic Republic of Congo about 55 years ago by Ken Enright. He was a, an evangelist but realized he could not pastor everybody who he wanted to Christ and so wanted to grow some more pastors. And so he sat a few pastors on a log in the jungles of Congo and thus started uh, Kafakumba Pastor School. And here we are about 55 years down the road from that. Uh, we do now have two campuses, one in Zambia, where the Enrights relocated in about the year 1999 after some civil unrest in Congo. Uh, and so we have a campus there in Zambia, and then we still have the campus back in Congo that was started 
by them. Each campus has one session a year, one session of pastor school, and it runs from four to six weeks, uh, depending on what we're able to do. In Zambia, that session goes from about March to May, somewhere in there. Usually we move it back and forth depending on when Easter falls. And then in uh, Congo, we usually have it about around August because we do it at a college campus there, and that's when the college is on break, so we get to use their facilities. Uh, each pastor goes for about eight years, uh, and uh, they keep coming back for those eight years. And so they, they spend two years as a freshman, two years as a sophomore, etc., and until they finally graduate. And when they do graduate from Kafakumba Pastor School, they are ordained in the United Methodist Church uh, as an ordained elder. Uh, they start off being ordained as a deacon as they go in. Most of them serve a church while they're going to pastor school, and then at the end of it, they're ordained as an elder. Uh, so the pastors in Zambia often come from the countries of Zambia and Tanzania, and more recently, Namibia. That's kind of our newest addition, and we're excited about adding another country uh, to our, our list of countries that people are coming from. Uh, the pastors in Congo come from Congo. Uh, that's been, we have enough pastors there to, f to fully uh, fill that session of pastor school, but the ones in Zambia come from about three different places. Uh, attendance uh, this last year was around 80 in Zambia, around 90 in Congo, and those are just pastors. Now, once you reach junior or senior in pastor school, uh, you can bring your spouse and also some of your children, some of the younger children. And so um, the actual number of people at the sessions is more than that, but this is the number of pastors that are there. So I want to introduce you to a couple of pastors. Uh, one is one that you may be familiar with. Some of you may know Pastor Kilembo, Pastor Robert Kilembo. Um, his daughter uh, Naomi will be at the dinner, and I think Vipata as well, his son. They are both uh, have been going to Purdue University, and so we're really happy to have them uh, at the dinner as well. Uh, Pastor Keelum is the director of Kafakumba Training Center. Um, he was kind of handpicked by John Enright to uh, oversee that. Um, you know, it's, it's hard to find good help. You know, good help's hard to find, they say, but uh, Pastor Keelum has been a wonderful help and a wonderful person and a great leader in so many different ways. And so we're just excited to continue to have him serve at pastor school. Um, he is the pastor school coordinator and overseer while we hold, hold the session there at Kafakumba. And he does a great job of just running that. And he's also a good personal friend as well. So uh, please be praying for him as he oversees so much of this. And he also is the one who often will go to Congo for the Congo pastor school session and make sure that everything's running smoothly there as well. So he's got, he's got his plate full. Pray for Pastor Kilembo. Another uh, pastor that I want to introduce you to is Pastor Isaac Muke. He is a graduate of Kafakumba Pastor School. Uh, he's a translator. Uh, he often translates for me and my teaching because my Swahili and my Bemba are, are not as good as they should be. And uh, so he translates. He does video editing. He also is a printer. And he has actually put together a video of some of our pastors. I would love to have been able to bring some of our pastors from pastor school with me to come and speak to you and kind of show you firsthand uh, what Kafakumba Pastor School is doing. But the next best thing, I guess, is a, a video which he's put together by some of those pastors, just kind of letting us know a little bit about them. And so I want to show that to you now and uh, just so that you can see some of the direct results of Kafakumba Pastor School. Starting from breakfast, lunch, and supper, 
cutting tools, writing, painting, everything. I would like to say thank you and may God bless them. And they may they continue to the spirit. I'm coming from a church called uh, Miracle Life Church. We have members about 132 or so. Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, being at this school, this is my fifth year. Mm -hmm. um, it has really transformed my life. Mm -hmm. And uh, even the church where I'm coming from, the teachings have been so good. Mm -hmm. And uh, the church has been helped so much. And uh, the community, looking at the things that we did not know, mm -hmm. we have been equipped and um, I think they are good teachings. We are grateful for this school. Yeah, my message is uh, surely may God increase them, may God bless them. You have been so wonderful to us. You have equipped a lot of people. Um, it is a challenge here in Africa to be to be at a school like this one uh, because of resources, but uh, everything has been provided for us: accommodation, food, transport money, and uh, may God just bless them. May you be blessed. We are grateful that indeed you have been taking care of us as a community, as a school. We are so happy. We appreciate you. May God continue blessing you. My name is Pastor Felix Mbuya. I just want to appreciate all the donors that have been so faithful, sponsoring us at Kapampumba Training Center, where we'll be training as pastors so that we can take the gospel in an organized way, you know. Because uh, when you are learning and you can offer the gospel well to the people out there, and we appreciate that uh, we have not paid anything. We have been so faithful, uh, providing meals, transportation, and everything, all the necessary things that we need for our training. My name is Irana Malana. I'm in Namibia. I'm from Namibia. I'm a pastor. Actually, about the school, my life is changing because of Kapakuna schools. And the, the, the more they support this school, is the more many pastors can come and get. My name is Samuel Paulus Smantu. Mm -hmm. After I finished my, my first year class, it's really neat as Namibia went and influenced others to transform the life of people. Uh, we really feel proud as Namibia as we came for a certain time because of Kafakumba, uh, the message and the study that we get from Kafakumba, it really made another uh, other pastors to feel and uh, come to Kafakuma also to participate in this program to become pastors and help other fellow uh, Namibians. To, uh, to God natures who are teaching us the things which we never knew before. And also, I appreciate uh, for, uh, for their powerful research which we have been taught here. And also, we are getting food for free, and uh, everything is soup for free, everything, we are not even paying any, any single food. If there is any changes, because when I was, and uh, even though I was, I was a, a, a believer, but there is something which was uh, troubling me in my life. And, but from there, there is some ways which I was following, which was, uh, wasn't good. But from there, when I came here to Kapakumba School, I thought that my life has been changed. Maybe when I go back to Namibia, I will give that message that I have to change another one. Well, when I get here, I think of the of Tungaji, or when I'm going to go to Kamaria. I'm going to go to Nisha Sam. See, I'm going to go to Nisha Sam. Yeah. 
kwa sababu ya masomo ya kipastori lakini inatrainisha pia hata kimwili kwa hiyo ni shukuru sana hapa kitu kitu chochote tunapokuwa kwenye masomo na hata masomo ya wote na ni masomo mazuri yanatusaidia sana sisi kwa ujumla yanisaidia mimi sana katika kazi yangu ya kichungaji na pia bila kusahau masomo ya discipline yamekuwa yanisaidia sana katika kazi yangu ya kiesi So I hope that despite the subtitles and some of the other challenges that you really got the message of that video, which, which was totally just to say thank you to Kafakumba Development Project Fund and, and other people who support uh, Kafakumba Pastor School. Um, these folks don't have anywhere else to go. This is the, the one and only option they have. And you make it very easy by providing the resources we need to feed them, to house them, to uh, get their transport, to get them there. And so they, they, I wanted you to hear it in their words and from their mouths, a very special thank you for all you do for pastor school. So as we kind of think about uh, what's going on in the church in sub-Saharan Africa, um, you know, a lot of you probably hear that the church is growing by leaps and bounds. And I, on one level, that's very true. Uh, the church is expanding rapidly and widely. Uh, but I would say the big challenge of the African church now is that it's, it's, uh, it's a mile wide and an inch deep. Uh, maybe you've heard that expression before, which is to say that the church is very broad. It encompasses a lot of people, but the whole aspect of discipleship is still so seriously lacking. And that's really what we want to focus on in pastor school is to train pastors, to make disciples of pastors who can then take what they've learned and how they've been transformed and transform others. Uh, Zambia considers itself a Christian nation, but again, once again, while you can say that, that just about everybody in Zambia is Christian by name, uh, it's that discipleship and that growth and that transformation that really needs to happen, and that's the focus of pastor school that we really want to focus on in training pastors. So this is one of our newer classrooms that just got remodeled, and it's so much better, the atmosphere for them to learn in than we had before. We're training pastors really with a desire that they take what they've learned and how they've been transformed. They take it home to their own uh, churches, villages, whether they're churches in the town or city or village, that they help the people in their church transform as well. We're not a seminary. We don't teach Greek and Hebrew. Um, in, in most of their villages, that's an unnecessary skill. What we're trying to do is teach uh, spiritual formation and practical ministry skills. And that's our desire with pastor school, and that's what you all enable us to help them do. Uh, really, we're there to teach them. You know, uh, when the lawyer asked Jesus what it was all about, Jesus summarized it all with love. Love of God, love of other humans. And so what we're trying to do actually through pastor school is to create loving pastors who then in turn go back to their churches and create uh, people who live by love. That's our goal. That's our hope. And that's our desire. So some of you have maybe heard of Kafakumba Pastor School, but maybe not many of you have heard of Kafakumba Transformational Outreach. And I would say this is kind of like the big umbrella under which we have many different ministries. We have the pastor school. Uh, those of you at the dinner will, will hear Chris Fred talk about the GOAT project. We have several businesses. I know many of you know about the Honey project. We have a clinic that we're working on. We have a retirement home that we're building with the hope of being able to uh, resource some jobs there in Zambia. So all these kind of fall under this big umbrella of Kafakumba Transformational Outreach. Um, those of you who knew John knew that he carried on the work of his parents, Ken and Lorraine Enright, continuing pastor school. John's life work was kind of on the seven principles of the kingdom of God. And I want to just focus for, for a minute or two on one of those. Uh, John and I uh, started writing that book together about uh, how he came to this model of uh, transformation prior to his death. And I'm still working on trying to get that finished, so would appreciate prayer. Uh, that I'd be able to finish that up and get that uh, out. Uh, but one of the principles that John talked about was motivation by love. Motivation by love. And of course, I just mentioned that that's really what we're all about. Um, the alternative to that is motivation by fear. And for too many years, 
the church and uh, Christianity as a whole has been trying to motivate people not by love but by fear. And we're trying to kind of overcome some of those uh, uh, wrong ways that we've taken in the past. Fear is very deeply rooted in African culture and uh, <laughs> I guess more recently a lot more in American culture as well as you guys have struggled with a lot of uh, things here in the past year. Um, so fear, fear is, it is a motivator, but it's not the kind of motivator we want for the kingdom. We want love to be the motivation for the kingdom. So I want to show you, I um, just want to prepare you for this. Um, most of you know that John Enright passed away in a car accident a couple of years ago. And um, although obviously he can't be here, his wife Kendra can't as well. And so this is the first uh, dinner like this that we haven't had either one of those. So I wanted to just play a short clip by John when he was teaching, uh, when I was pastoring down in Melbourne, Florida some years back. And they did a seminar on the principles and he taught about this principle of motivation by fear. And he did that by telling a story about getting stopped at a roadblock, which was a common occurrence in Congo. Uh, stopped at a roadblock by a soldier. Uh, you've already prepared yourself by taking your money and tucking it in your sock so that you know if you pull out your wallet you can show them it's empty. Um, you prepared yourself for that and so you pull up to the roadblock and John picks up the story from there. Afraid that it will be stolen. Uh, the soldier asks you for money, you want to keep your money, but you're afraid that the soldier's going to take it and so you tell a lie and say you don't have money. Every time you have either exaggeration or a lie, the basis of it is fear. Paid of the money. I'm afraid now that I've been called a spy and I'm going to get shot. So I used to be afraid about the money in my pocket. Now I'm afraid that somebody's going to kill me. So I give him the money. He's afraid because he's ripping off travelers on the road. And so if he gets caught ripping off travelers, he might get into trouble with his superiors. We may have to share the money. So now he wants to make peace because he's afraid there might be some consequences. And so I go on down the road, and this whole scene has been motivated by fear. But in the kingdom of God, our motivation is love. The only acceptable motivation is agape love. Now, this is not love that you have for your wife or your child or your, your, your someone that you care very deeply for. To love your enemies is an oxymoron in English. Because when you say enemy, it means you don't love them. This is stupid. How do you love your enemy? But you see, the Greek word agape is not talking about uh, that kind of love. It is talking about wanting the best for them. Wanting the best for the people who actually hate you. Obviously, to love your enemy as you love your child is impossible. But to want the best for your enemy, that is possible. So John gives us an idea of, of what we're talking about when we talk about love. Uh, it's not a warm, fuzzy feeling. We can't feel that towards our enemy. But we're talking about being primarily concerned with their well-being, caring about them. And so we're trying to teach these concepts in pastor school and try to uh, hopefully help them not only to hear them and learn them in their head, but to be transformed by them in their heart. Um, so Sister Joan Chittister, an author and theologian and speaker, talks of, of one thing that has been present for her as she's traveled around to the different places where she teaches. And she says, everywhere there are people who, despite finding themselves mired in periods of national disruption or personal marginalization, refuse to give up the thought of a better future or give in to the allurements of a deteriorating present. They never lose hope that the values they learned in the best of times, or the courage it takes to reclaim their world from the worst of times, are worth the commitment of their lives. So what we're talking about here is not just something that's, that's good for Zambia. We're talking about something that's good for America too. This has been a rough year, to say the least, 2020, and a lot of challenges. But hopefully, some of us who are here or watching this video uh, are the kinds of people who are the kind of people that Joan's talking about here in her quote, people who just don't uh, let the present overcome the good lessons we've learned. She goes on to say that steadfast 
unyielding, courageous commitment sustains and makes God's word, which really summarizing God's word in one word is love, that makes love the center of everything the faithful do in the midst of the storm of change that engulfs us as we go. And we have had storms this year, both in Zambia, uh, obviously worldwide with the pandemic, some of the challenges the United States has had this year, uh, a lot of storms. But if we can allow that, that steadfast, unyielding, courageous commitment to keep us loving, that's what it's all about. And that's what pastor school is about, is teaching and training pastors to be able to, to have that deep character, that no matter what happens, what comes in their setting, in their village, in their national life, uh, in the country where they are, that they're that kind of person. Uh, this is a picture of Lorraine Enright. Uh, she had a wonderful ministry there to the children. And I just thought it was a great picture to put this other quotation by Joan up there. She said, our task is to be obedient all our lives to the will of God, which is love for the world. And therein lies the difference between being good for nothing and good for something, between religion for show and religion for real. As I said a little bit earlier, Sub-Saharan Africa is very religious. It's very Christian. But to be honest, and I say this sadly, uh, also realizing, though that is probably true in North America as well, that much religion is for show. It's not religion for real. And what we're hoping to do through Catholic Cumba Pastor School is to train pastors who have that deep-rooted sense of spirituality, relationship with the living God, that they can take back to their villages and not just have it about religion for show, that they might really show the people by their lives the love that God has planted in them so that they can share that with them. And love, we believe, is what will transform. And as they love the people in their villages and their churches, we believe that love will make the, those people loving people as well. So I close with one more quote uh, by Joan. The quality of life we create around us as followers of Jesus is meant to seed new life and new hope. The quality of life we create around us as followers of Jesus is meant to seed new life and new hope. Our desire with Cafacoma Pastor School is to seed new life and new hope in the lives of pastors who then hopefully will multiply that new life and new hope in the villages and in the people in their churches to help shape pastors to go on to help shape others, their fellow Africans, to be the kind of person that Joan is talking about. People who make God's love the center of everything they do. People who are good for something. People who live religion for real. But this is not just for African pastors. It's for all of us. It's a call for us to love as well. To make love the center of our lives as well. To want the best even for the people who hate us. And in these days in North America and the U.S., uh, you know, there's been a lot of division, and I think it's a time for us to reconsider Jesus' message about this as well. The good news is we don't have to like everybody. <laughs> there are a lot of people in our lives that are hard to like. But Jesus does tell us to love everybody. And he not only tells us how to do it, he shows us how to do it. People from a different political perspective, people who see life differently than we do, we're called to love them. So may we be the kind of people who do not give in to the despair of a deteriorating present, but who offer hope and life and love that will transform the world. Let's pray. Lord, we do thank you for pastor school and for the pastors that are attending that school. We pray for their shaping and their growth and transformation. But Lord, we pray for everyone who's watching this as well, that each of us in our little corner of the world, in our little neighborhood, the people with whom we come in contact, may we be the kind of people who sow that life and love in the lives of those around us. So guide us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Just a couple of closing thoughts for you. We do want to let you know, obviously, Cafacumba Pastor School Development Fund uh, does what they do so that uh, we create this endowment that funds pastor school in perpetuity. 
We used to have Ken Enright and John Enright going around telling their awesome stories and preaching in a way that just was wonderfully entertaining and et cetera. Um, we don't have them around anymore to do that. And so Cafacumba Development Project Fund has been wonderful in providing the funds for pastor school to continue. Our current fund total is around $700,000. Our, our goal, our end goal is $1.5 million. And we feel like if we can get to that point, then the interest from that will perpetually fund pastor school. Uh, our current earnings, annual earnings of the fund are about $38,000. Uh, and our current annual funding requirement uh, for both uh, Zambia and pastor, uh, Congo pastor school is about $70,000. So we got a ways to go, but we think that if we just double what we have now, that it will actually uh, allow us to continue to fund that and uh, keep that going in perpetuity. Typical annual attendance in Zambia is about 80, uh, Congo about 118, and in 2019, you see the numbers there, they were down a little bit in Zambia, but uh, those will go back up as we start a new class as well. So if you are feeling like God's leading you or calling you to be involved in this ministry, to be a part of this, um, you are welcome to make checks out to Cafacumba Development Projects, mail those checks to the address that's there on your screen, and uh, please continue to pray for pastor school. Uh, pray that we might uh, be able to do uh, what we have set out to do, which is to teach love, to transform people into loving people who can train others to love also. Of course, as we're coming up on our next pastor school, we don't know what the pandemic's going to be doing by then, so please be in prayer that by March or so, everything will have been cleared up so that we can finish that off. And then when August rolls around, we can get back to having it in Congo as well. So thank you so much for tuning in today, for hearing a little bit of the presentation. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to contact me through the website. You can get my email address. It's nate.sturry at kafakumba.org. And uh, that's nate.sturry at kafakumba.org. So if you have any questions or anything, feel free to contact me. And thanks so much for all your support. God bless.